All right, Notion just dropped their AI database builder. So in this video, we'll go over everything it can do and can't do so you know exactly how to use it. And the idea is pretty simple. Why create a database yourself, right, if you can just ask AI to do it for you? Now, to launch this new Notion feature, you just want to create a database, right? So any way you trigger database creation, so either if you're on a new page and you click down here on table, or if I just type here now database to create an online database, you'll see that besides a bunch of templates popping up, you have this build with AI option. Now, if I click on build with AI, you'll open a prompt window. And now here I can describe it what it should build. So to kick things off, right, let's do something very simple. Um, please create a CRM or my cafe notion business, right? Fictional uh, company where I run a series of notion cafes. So let's see what it comes up with. After you prompted, you see it goes ahead and it first will create databases then we'll add properties and then we'll add views. So one of the cool things about Notion Database Builder, right, is that it not just gives you the basic structure, but also tries to set up a few things. Now, once it is happy with what it created, it will ask you to, you know, like uh, inspect it. And then uh, if you want to make any uh, changes, you can prompt it here. And you can also now turn on and off. Well, they call it features, but it's basically properties, right? So you see here in my preview, currently we have name, phone, email, customer type, last visit, and favorite orders. We could add total visits right now. It adds this property, the birthday, and some notes. So let's add all the properties and then click on done. And now you see I have here this database. Let's make this quickly full view. And uh, I have, as you can see, I created this first view where we have um, everything um, grouped by um, the, the select property, right? So it automatically added like a sort uh, to last visit descending for the most recent ones. And it added um, a grouping option. Quite nice, right? Creating a view with some settings. But let's actually inspect this just from scratch, what it did here, right? So we have a table, we have our customer name, we have a phone number, email, customer type, last visit, total visits. Looks pretty good as a starting point. Now, as always with AI, if you use a generic prompt, right, you get a generic output. So whether or not this CRM actually fits your needs will depend on how close, you know, your CRM needs are to a standard CRM. So let's do something a bit more detailed. Again, let's type slash database. And now um, build with AI, let's give it a more detailed prompt. So in this case, let's say I need a task management database for exam preparation. Uh, let's get a specific uh, non-work non related one for a change. We have task name, subject, due date, right? And then I will prompt it to give me specific views, right? Not just like what it thinks is necessary, but I want a, a task view that is not grouped with alphabetical sorting. I want a status overview as a board, and then I want a calendar. So let's have it build this. And then let's also see what happens, right, if we prompt it with um, a different question. So, right, we saw previously that we get this like little chat window popping up uh, on the bottom. So I can go in and now say, after it added these uh, three elements to, hey, please maybe also add a list view, right? I forgot. So it looks like at the first glance, that is quite good. So um, please uh, add a minimal list view as a fourth, fourth view option. I misspelled here, but I trust that AI <laughs> can read it correctly. And then we should see in a second that it pops up here with this false one. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's click on done and inspect it. And one thing we'll notice right away is that even though we told it to not group uh, our first view, it did, right? So that's one of the things that I noticed when testing uh, Notion AI, the AI database builder, is that it's not bad at adhering to its specific instructions, but it doesn't follow them all the time. Now, that isn't the end of the world, right? It's fairly easy for me to go in and say, okay, three dots, um, group, let's turn this off. But since I specifically prompted it to not do it, it's a little bit disappointing that it does that. And it means that if you use this right to build setups, you will have to go in and sort of like double check every single page just to make sure that it's actually set up the way you want it to be. I've tested this with a bunch of prompts and also re-ran them several times. And most of the time it actually adheres, right? Like most of the time it will not uh, add a grouping here. So it's definitely capable of understanding these instructions and then adding grouping or not. But it has a very strong preference for it, right? You'll notice that whenever you uh, ask it to do anything, it will probably always give you this first view with the grouping by a select property if there's one in the system. For the other uh, views, right, it, it did quite well. So it created our uh, bot uh, one here and I cre created our study planner. And I think it also in general, then, you know, shows certain properties that you specifically ask for. But again, this is something where I notice that if you do that, uh, if you run a prompt several times, sometimes it will maybe miss one of them or add another one, even though you didn't ask for it. It also, uh, on the study planner, right, uh, for the sorting that we asked for, like in this case, um, it actually, well, it did not add it, right? So here, even though like may maybe it's a bug, right, in Notion, it shows me here that the filter is set. So we should have uh, one going. Um, 
but uh, sometimes it adds it in correctly, sometimes it doesn't. I've also had some uh, trial runs where it adds one of the filters that I asked for, but on the other one. So again, right, we need to go through different views and ask for it. It will create the general types, right, that it got gets uh, right pretty much all the time with our board, calendar, and our simple list view. But when it then comes to details like sorting or filtering, we need to double check that it exists. Now, one thing that I really like about the Notion AI database builder is that it will also make use of Notion's new layout feature, right? So if you if you add any entry here, right, and just open it, we'll see that it automatically made use of it. It uh, pinned certain properties. It added some other ones to the sidebar. So it doesn't just, you know, give you a generic layout, but it tries to anticipate what would be useful for this. I think this is really, really good, particularly if you're, if you know, for new users who are using AI database builder, uh, check it out and might not know, right, that they can customize the layout by clicking here. So this is really cool that it seems to be deeper integrated with the product than just, you know, creating that basic schema mockup. However, the integration overall could be deeper. So there are a bunch of things that I think would be really, really useful if the AI database builder could do it, but currently it can't. The very first thing is that it can't create any multi-database setup. So whenever you ask it for anything, it will only create one database. So even if I say now database, right, build with AI, uh, please, uh, please create a simple project management system with two databases, uh, one for projects and one for tasks, it will not be able to do this. But it will pick one of the two, it will create that. Sometimes it creates some text properties for the other one, but it is unable to create several databases at once. And that of course limits the usefulness of this tremendously. In pretty much any Notion setup, right, the second you build something that is a bit more complex, you need several databases and you need them linked together. The fact that Notion AI A can't create uh, several databases at once, and then B, even if you have, you know, like if you, if you go step by step through it, it will not be able to create relations between them, right? So even if I ask this to, um, you know, please um, relate this to my project uh, database, A, I can't mention that proper, uh, project database, right? So I can't use the add command to pull in another database and tell that this is the one that it should be linking to. So it would have to, to guess where in the workspace it is, right? But it will also just not be able to do anything. So sometimes it gives you then a, a text property, right? Um, bodies, but they won't be the actual, you know, relation uh, to it. So that is a little bit disappointing because I think if Notion could do that, that would help a lot of new users, right? Like just build useful systems out of the get-go. So we see, right, it turned actually my task uh, <laughs> database just into a project database now. Again, not really what we asked for, but I mean, that is okay. Speaking of limitations, there's one other thing, right, that I think with Notion can figure that out, it would be super cool for the user base, and that is formulas, right? Again, something that we currently can't generate with the AI database with our formulas, <laughs> not at all. So if we ask it to uh, create a simple database with two number properties and a third um, formula, property that sums up, sums uh, up the numbers, right? It will give me the two number properties, but not the third one uh, with the formula. It, 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 I've tried like, you know, a bunch of different prompts. It just doesn't seem to be able to create and write notion formulas, which again, right, would be really, really cool if it could. So here in this case, it actually gives me a sum property, but uh, if you don't inspect it right, it is always an, an empty one. There's not actually a formula behind it. So I haven't been able to get it to create even the property type formula, even without an actual formula inside of it. That means you still have to learn Notion formulas for a while to make the most use of the product, but you are in luck because I am about to drop a really, really big Notion masterclass with formulas and database automations on YouTube completely for free. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do so now so you don't miss it when that releases. Now for the last limitation, Notion AI Database Builder is also not able to make any of the customization options active, right? So as you know, if you go on any database, customize, you have the option to add sub items, dependencies, we can add it as a task database to our home and so on. These things, uh, they can't be added. With sub items and dependencies, pretty obvious, right? Because they involve relations. And since it can't create relation properties, not even to itself, uh, that of course is not part of it. And, uh, you know, setting like it just doesn't seem to be able to go into these, uh, you know, deeper settings here. It will create, um, you know, uh, AI properties sometimes. Most of the time though, they will be normal properties and you have to turn on the AI feature then specifically. So much for limitations, right? So overall, it's a pretty cool feature. It creates your properties. It gives them icons, which I love, right? I'm a huge, huge fan of using like a consistent design language across your database and not stick with the default icons because it makes it so much easier to see them. It does create different views and most of the time it's fairly good, right? Like 80 to 90% of the time, good to stick to your specific instructions of how that view should be set up and it can create the database layout. 
Plus, it's a great way for just some inspiration, right? So if you uh, use the AI database generator and you, you don't know right how to set up a CRM database, so you don't know what could you do in order to track your books or your hobbies or, you know, like the employee, um, the employees in your company, these sort of things, uh, it's a great starting point to help you, you know, then develop your system. But right now, it's also just that a starting point. So what do I think will be the most useful use case for this? I think on the one hand, right, it's, uh, again, this inspiration element. So if you're a beginner in Notion, if you're setting up a new part of the system and you haven't built this before, then I think Notion AI, uh, the generator, will be a great, uh, you know, help in getting started and not having to start a blank page. That's one thing. And on the other end, if you're a power user and you set up a ton of databases, either for your company or because you're a consultant working with other people, then again, this can help shorten the development time but you still have to go through elements, right, and then make sure that they are all correct. So I don't think you save that much. You probably save a lot of clicking, but your actual time probably doesn't shrink as much as it could. So should you get Notion AI for the AI database builder? Well, probably not. As a standalone feature, right, this would not be worth the upgrade. And that is true for a lot of Notion's AI features, right? The AI database fill is nice, but it's not a must-have feature. The ability to, you know, like uh, ask it questions like ChatGPT is nice, but most of the time not a must-have feature if you already have ChatGPT. And same for, right, like the ability to create any in-page content. But, and that is the crucial thing, each of these elements is useful, right? Even if it's not a killer feature in itself, the usefulness stacks up and having it all accessible in one place is really cool. So, well, I don't think that, you know, Notion AI database builder should be the, the single point while someone gets Notion AI. Slowly but steadily, the value there keeps stacking up. And there is actually one killer feature, right? Q&A in Notion is definitely a killer feature. If you have your knowledge base in Notion as a company, this is insanely useful. So that's one standalone reason to get it. But again, slowly over time, we're also getting more and more reasons, even if you don't use that, to maybe consider upgrading to it. So... There you have it, a first look at Notion's new AI database build feature. Pretty cool, but still some way to go. I can't wait to see, though, where the team is taking this feature, right? It is already really, really promising in this first version, and we've seen, right, how many uh, AI improvements Notion can ship in a short span, right? So we started with just very basic functionality, and now we're here. So once it gets a few more functionality and is a bit more reliable when it comes to, you know, uh, following instructions, I think this will be a really, really cool improvement to make sure people make the most out of Notion every single time. In the meantime, you still might need a Notion consultant to build a really cool Notion setup for your company. And if that's the case, well, you know where to find me and my team. Other than that, here is in the corner now a super cool video with 117 Notion tips. If you're looking to upskill, right, and stay ahead of AI, well, then this one is for you. After you watch this, I promise you, you know everything there is about Notion and can go ahead and build some really, really cool stuff. Just click there and I'll see you in a second.